one moment. Okay. Okay. So today we're talking about how to get organized and specifically how to organize your bathroom closet. But I got an email that prompted this and so I thought I would kind of go through my system. Um, it's from Angela and she says, I love your channel and all your straightforward advice. Thank you. My biggest problem is I get very overwhelmed easily. I don't like clutter, but I get overwhelmed trying to deal with it. Amen, Amen sister. sister. Oh, preach it. <laughs> <laughs> that causes me just to shut down and procrastinate, which in turn causes a bigger clutter problem. I need help getting focused and staying focused so I don't get overwhelmed. Please help. What to do when, what do I do when I get overwhelmed? Wow, that's probably a very common problem, right? Yeah, you run, you run screaming from the house, <laughs> going ah, it's all just make it burn. Especially me, you know, I have a certain <laughs> amount of patience for a little while, and then it gets to a certain point, and I just want to go. Ah! Yeah, so I'm on my bathroom, so I'm going to show you how I did my bathroom closet and talk a little bit about that today. Um, let's. Just get a call in here. Let's see. Big Bear Homestead. Hello. And everybody tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern. Is it Eastern Big Bear? I think it's Eastern. 8 p.m. Eastern. Check out Big Bear Homestead. He's on the Homestead Network with us. And he starts his show at 8 tonight. His live show tonight. Eight, tonight and that would eight. be Big Bear Homestead at YouTube or go to yes. thehomesteadnetwork.com. Yes. And there should be a link to it. Yes. Okay. Cool. Very good. Man, you got it. I got okay. you back in there. Um, <laughs> so, any tips on organizing with children from Brandy? <laughs> Joyce says you can't please everyone about my being happy and that I'm not happy enough. Yeah, I know. It's just, I think it's funny that people, one person comments one thing and then I get the exact opposite. So, yeah. Um, okay, looks like we've got everybody on here. Yay! Maria says... I am so organized. Well, this is for you guys today. So, let me switch my... Where did all my pictures go? Oops, let me switch computers here. here. Just kidding. <gasps> yeah, no, oh, okay. Here, so, this. you take that one. Sorry. We're we'll organizing all these <laughs> technical aesthetic things. Okay, you got We're it. We're getting organized so we can tell you how to organize. You go, girl. Uh, so... I have that same problem, and my problem is I know how to organize, but I am so sick that either I get really, really sick and I just can't get my brain to get myself going, or we have something going on, like this week it's been VBS, and um, my wonderful daughter, I have to give her kudos. Are you in here, Ellie? She's, she's not in, in the, here. She's in the bedroom. Oh, okay. Keeping the dog from clicking on the audio. Oh, okay. <laughs> so my wonderful daughter last night, Mike and I went to worship. What was it? How was that thing called we went to? It was worship night in America with yeah. Chris Tomlin and... Matt Redman and everybody. We don't Little usually Wickham. go to concerts or anything. This is only like the second concert we've ever been to, but it was great. But when we came home, my daughter had completely picked up everything. My problem is, I don't mind cleaning. I hate picking up. It drives me nuts. I'm not a maid, and I'm not going to keep picking up after the kids, but with five kids, 18 down to seven, none of them are there at the same time, so we can just say, everybody pick up now. I have to wait for one to wake up, or one to get home from work, or whatever. Um, and so now, it's just trying to get everyone to get their own stuff picked up. Well, last night my daughter went and cleaned everything in the kitchen and the living room, and it was so wonderful to come home to a nice picked up house. <laughs> so it makes, my whole point of that is it makes a huge difference when you can keep it picked up. So what I do is, and quite frankly, it doesn't look like I do anything, but I would... <laughs> you have a question already. Uh-oh. Karen says, how do you encourage everyone else in the home to put things back the way they found them to keep things organized? She says specifically her husband. Well. <laughs> Husbands are big kids in that way, aren't they? Except yes, me. they are. He does pretty good. Yeah. I'm sort of perfectionist about yeah. that. Yeah. Thankfully, he doesn't 
leave a bunch of stuff out, and I thank you for that. Here, wow. I'll give you a smooch for it. Um, so, kids, you need to set a routine with kids. So, like, for us, before the teenagers were teenagers, every night before bed, everyone picked up everything. We would do 15 to 20 minutes before bed, and everyone would go in and pick up all their stuff. Now, I kind of pile all the teenagers' stuff on the ledge. Now, I will admit, my teens are having an issue with this, and we just sat down and had a lecture the other night before mom's head blew off. <laughs> I said, this is not the UN. This is a benevolent dictatorship. <laughs> you are going to do this. So now what we're doing, and this has only been two days, so they've been good two days, but I can already see it's coming. Now we told them, if we find trash or whatever, my oldest has a really hard time sleeping, and so he's up roaming the house all night long. Like last night at 3 o'clock in the morning, he was making cinnamon rolls. And he makes I coffee came, at 3 in the morning. Yeah. And I, he says it helps him sleep, but we don't believe that. I don't know. Some people it does. Mom says it helps her, so maybe it does. But um, there was cinnamon roll stuff all over. So now i got to wait for him to wake up and get him done. But what we're doing is we're taking their phones. We told them, if I find your trash, I'm taking your phone. Period. I don't care if you're 18 and paid for it for yourself. I'm getting it. If you're not going to clean up after yourself, then you're not going to be playing on your phone either or talking to your friends. So that's what we're doing at the moment. So, so for kids. Okay, so I'll answer questions in just a minute. Let me get through my, my slides here so I can kind of see because otherwise I'm going to be jumping all over the place and <laughs> people are going to get dizzy. <laughs> so um, give us your questions and then we'll go through at the end and I'll answer them all. So we'll scroll through and look through them all and then um, we'll do them at the end. Um, Unless it's specific to something I'm showing you at the moment. So, how I motivate myself to get organized is, um, what happens is, every I like to go through every closet and everything every six months in my house. So, like, I like to do all the kitchen cabinets, all the um, closets, all the kids' closets, all our closets, all the you know, the basement, that kind of thing. Every six months, I try to do that. So I try to do... And one thing at a time, not everything all at once. Exactly. So what I, so how I do that to motivate myself is I'll pick one thing. And, like, I'll start with something simple. And I went through and I just did an organizing stint a couple months ago. And I took a whole bunch of pictures as I did it. And we're going to show you some of those over the next few weeks. And this is the first one. But um, I'll pick with something simple. So actually, the one I'm showing you today isn't the first one I started with. But <laughs> this was one that I thought everybody had a bigger problem with. So what I did was I was overwhelmed. I was tired. I was sick. But it was driving me crazy. So I pulled out my utility drawer in my kitchen, which is... Like my knives, my can opener, my oh corn cob holder thingies, and matches and scissors and that kind of thing. So I just pulled everything out of there, dumped it on the counter, and just went for it. And the thing is, guys, this usually only takes like 10 or 15 minutes. That particular project literally took me 10 minutes to completely clear everything out of the drawer and only put back what I needed. And so one tip is to time yourself. When I know it's only going to take me 10 minutes to clean out that drawer, I do it. And I just get in and do it quick. And then bigger projects, I'll choose 10 minutes to clean one shelf off, like in our closet, if I have a big to-do in our closet. So I'm going to walk you through the system that I did in our bathroom. Now this did take me about an hour, but I was taking pictures and I had kids running in and out and I had phone calls and I had him emailing me business stuff. Well, what do you think about this? <laughs> and so I had a lot of interruptions for this one and it still took me about an hour. So that's not horrible. And normally if everybody's gone and I don't have any business questions from Mike or anything, I can get it done in 
probably 20 or 30 minutes, pretty easy, you know. So, okay, so we're starting with my bathroom closet. Now this is, I'm gonna show you some pictures of the before. Now on top here, this is where I have on the... Um, well, no, we have two closets in the bathroom. One is the clothes and one is but well, supplies and towels, right? Well, it's, yeah, actually, so our master closet, master bedroom closet is in the bat is behind the bathroom. You can see it on the right there. So, yeah, but that's our master closet. It's not actually a bathroom closet. So, this is this is an actual linen closet for our bathroom. So, on the top here, on the top left, I have all my makeup bags and I have my mouse massager. It's a little electrode thing that I put on for my fibromyalgia and it zaps me. I have um, um, the mouse massager. Um, then on the right, I have our vaporizer and then what in the world is that black thing on the bottom? I have no idea what that black thing is on the bottom. So anyway, <laughs> make it go away. Yeah. Throw it away. <laughs> so that's what I have on the top shelf. Then I have for the next shelf, I have on the left, I have all my lotions in that container. And then in the middle, I have all my extra makeup, makeup that I don't use every day, but that I keep for like Halloween or if they had a buy one, get one free on foundation. And then on the right, we have our eyeglass cleaning things, yes. Um, our eyeglass, what are, wipes, 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 that's what they're called. Then on the next shelf, I have my curling iron hung up. I hang it on the wire thing so that when I'm done curling my hair, I can just hang it up and don't have to worry. It looks like it's leaning against the wall, but it's not in here. And so that way it can cool, but I don't have to leave it on my counter. Underneath that, on the left, I have my um, all my deodorants, extra deodorants, extra little travel size lotions and stuff like that. In the middle, yes, in the middle, I have a bunch of miscellaneous like, um, well, it looks like there's a lotion there, but Q-tips and toothpaste and that kind of thing. Then on the bottom. I have, on the left, I have some medicines, and in that spice shaker thing is zinc oxide. Um, zinc oxide for, to, um, um, for putting in shoes. If you have smelly shoes, I'm having Mike get a link right now for this. If you have smelly shoes, this zinc oxide is super cheap. Yeah, yes, it's super, super cheap. And we've used this powder for probably, well, I know it's been two years because it came, because when my niece came to live with it with us, I remember I bought some. And so it's been two years since I've had this. And just sprinkle some of that. I put it in an old spice bottle. And just sprinkle some of that in your shoes, and all the smells goes away. It's just really great. So I have my zinc oxide. In the very back, you can't see, but I had a bunch of lice soap from before I started making soap that I um, was hoarding and using for my own personal because I really liked it. Then on the left, on the right, <laughs> is um, towels. And then the next one below that is towels. And then my curlers. And on the bottom shelf, we have our scale and we have our um, vaporizers. Now. As you can see from this picture, I mean, the, the towels are okay, but from this picture, you can see it's just a mess. And it was driving me crazy. And so I just thought I just have to get it done. Just get in there and get it finished. And so I was having a better day and I thought I'm just going to tackle it. I thought it was going to take me 20 minutes. It ended up taking me an hour with the interruptions, but still I got it done and it's been four or five months and it's been great. So I'm going to walk you through the process of how I did that. So I started, I always start with the easy stuff first. So if you're doing any kind of organizing, start with the easy stuff first or pick a section and start with it first. So like when I'm doing our boys' bedrooms and shoveling it, 
every six months or so. I mean, we try to keep them up on top of it, but you know, sometimes you have things happen and it just goes to pot, so I have to go in and shovel. And so I will, um, when I do that, I always start with the clothes in the boys' room because to me, that's something I know where it goes, I know what I need to do with it, so I just start there. So for me, that's easy. For you, it may be the toys, crayons, whatever, but just pick one thing and always start there. So for me, in the bathroom, the towels are the easiest part. So that's where I start. Now, let me take a brief break here for just a minute. Do we have any questions on this particular section before I go on? Um, Maria said for shoes, you can also, she says, you know, it's cheaper, fill a freezer bag with lemon peels and put your shoes in it and put them in the freezer overnight. Never heard yeah, of but you before. still have to buy the lemons, so we don't buy lemon very much, so that wouldn't work. Ramona says, what's the zapper you use for your fibro? Um, Ramona, it's similar to a TENS unit, and I had Mike put the link on Facebook for you. Um, oh, it's called one. a mouse massager, and you put it on where your muscles are hurting, and it zaps you. It puts a little electric volt through there, and yeah, it's like a mini massage. Okay, back to towels. So towels is where I start. So I pulled all my towels out. And I set them all on the kitchen, or I mean on the bathroom sink. Then I put, then you can see it's totally empty in there. Now these two shelves were pretty easy. And I just left most of the other things because I didn't really need to declutter any of those. So just the towels is what I was decluttering. You will notice on my shelves, and I want to point this out because this is important. We have these horrible wire shelves that you either love them or hate them. I absolutely hate them, but they'd be great for drying soap now. But my neighbor loved them because she said you could see through things. But everything I put on there always fell through or was lopsided and never stood straight, and I just hated them. So what I did was I took these cheapy floor tiles, they're the peel and stick floor tiles, and... Mm -hmm. um, peel and stick floor tiles, and I got these at Dollar General, and I think Family Dollar has them, and it was 12 tiles for $12, and Mike is going to put a link so you can see what they are, like that. Um, he's going to put a link from Amazon. This is an affiliate link, but just to show you what they are. And actually, it looks like they might be cheaper on Amazon than what I paid for them, um, if I'm looking at the right thing. Um, and what I did was I peeled them off and I stuck them on my shelves to keep the stuff from falling through. So then I didn't have to buy new shelves and everything would stay straight and flat. So that's a big tip that if you have those horrible wire shelves that some people love but I don't, Put those on there and that really helps. It's a cheap, easy solution. Mm. If you don't have peel and stick tiles or don't have the money for it, you could cut up a cardboard box and just cut a cardboard box to size and just lay it down there. And if you wanted to pretty it up, you could just, if you have extra spray paint, you could spray paint over that. So then I went and folded, refolded all my towels. So I sat and folded, got all those done. And then, in the end, this is how all my towels ended up. So you can see on the bottom, they're all nice and neat. I got the big towels on the right and the wash rags and the hand towels on the left. And I even pulled out my soap. You can see on the left there my bars of soap from Silver Dollar City before I started making my own because it smelled so good. I thought, well, this is dumb. Let's pull it out so I can let my closet smell good while I'm uh, waiting to use it. So after I did my towels, any questions on the towels? Um, I didn't see anything on towels. Mm, nope. Okay. Um, then I moved on to the next shelf, which, oops, I think I got my pictures mixed up here. Okay. Um, you sure what I'm looking for. Here it is. Okay. So then I moved on to the next shelves. 
And what I did was I pulled out all the deodorant ones and I pulled out two of the other ones because everything had been getting mixed together. So I got the boxes put together so that I could move things from one box to another and get them back where they belong. Now, um, I bought these shoe boxes for 25 cents at a yard sale. And I like the clear plastic ones so that you can see through. It drives me crazy when I see organizing shows saying, use these pretty baskets or whatever. They're pretty, but you have to keep pulling them out to see what's in there. That is the most ridiculous organizing tip I've ever heard. I'm sorry if you're one of those people on here and, and that's your tip, but it drives me nuts because you need to be able to see what's in there. And if your closet door is closed all the time, you can make it pretty, but don't, you know, don't make it hard on yourself to have to pull out every basket to find everything or have to search for labels and stuff like that. So I use the clear baskets. If you don't have the money to buy the clear plastic shoe boxes, just use something like the Amazon boxes. We order our supplements on Amazon and just take the Amazon boxes and either fold in the flaps or cut them off and use that to organize. So you can do that. But the clear ones are super nice. It's yeah. really nice to be able to look mm -hmm. in there and see without having to unload everything, what's in there. Yeah. And I find them all the time at garage sales. Like one, these were quarter, but one time I found a lady selling them and she was selling them 10 for a dollar. So they were 10 cents each. So for me, for $1 to be able to have that was way worth it. So back to organizing my shoe boxes. So what I did was I started pulling out things that weren't in there. So on the right in the sink is my trash. And I should have gone in and got the big trash can from the kitchen, but I just wanted to keep myself moving. So I just threw all the trash in the sink and just started piling it all in there. Then you can see... It was just before we did the unclogging the sink video. Right? Yeah. <laughs> just kidding. Thanks. <laughs> so you can see I put all the extra deodorants together. I used the hairspray and the hair supplies that I don't have. And then an extra travel shaving cream that we had. So I started that box with there. Then um, when I was done with that, this is what I had left over from those boxes. So I pulled them all on the counter. I put the other box in the counter, or I mean, on the shelf. And then this is what's left. So then I went, let's see. Hold on guys, I'm trying to figure out my pictures here. So then you can see here in the end, sorry. Okay, so in the end, I put the three boxes back, and the other stuff that was on the counter, I just left it there because they were going other places. So on the left, now, I have my face washes and my extra bottles. I have no idea how I got extra face wash. I think one of the kids didn't like the acne wash, so then I just use it when they don't like it. And I do always keep an extra pump bottle in case our soap pump bottles die. I just refill it with bubble bath is how I do ours. The middle one is the extra deodorants, extra hairspray. I don't have a lot of hair products. There's mousse and, and um, hairspray there. That's all I have and I use it maybe twice a year. So that's there. On the right, somehow we got extra cotton swabs. I think Mike must have picked them up one day and then I picked them up too. So we got extra cotton swabs and then we have the extra toothpaste, toothbrushes, and floss. So that's how I got that shelf done. Then let's move on. So you can see here, I forgot to show you, but this is the before of that same shelf there. So I must have skipped over one. So, and here's all the stuff that was left over from, um, this is how it was set up before. So then I took everything out and then I left it on the counter because it was going to go to the next place. So next, I just left the stuff on the counter. You can see there. I went through the lens wipes, make sure that they were all in there. Everything was there. Then the next one, I put the lens wipes back on the shelf. 
And then this is my makeup, extra makeup. So this is just where I have extra, this is all my make, extra makeup. I, I'm very minimal on my makeup. I have like three lipsticks and I have two blush. I do have about four eyeshadows and one eyeliner and one lip liner. So this here is, um, so what's in here? Let's see. So I have my foundation for winter and it's since it's, uh, or no, that was my foundation for summer because this was in the um, winter when I did this. So this was my foundation for summer. So I was pale at the time, so I didn't need this foundation. So I saved it until the summer. And um, then next to that is some extra eyeshadow that I had, some extra foundation, another pale foundation that I liked. And then an extra travel bottle and some bobby pins and Halloween makeup and Vaseline. So let's see, where did I go for that one? So that one there, okay, that one there I didn't really de-junk much because I only had... I'm not seeing this one. Yeah, I only had a couple of things in the makeup that I need to pull out and it was on the bottom there. There's a bronzer, so I got rid of that. But everything else I used, so I didn't really get any rid of anything. So then I moved on to my lotion box. Now you may say, why do you need so much lotion? Um, that is an awful lot of lotion. And why do I need so much lotion, honey? Because you got the best husband in the world. I have the best husband in the world. <laughs> so, I have so much lotion because Michael massages me about three well, it used to be three to five times a week. Now it's gotten down to about once a week. But because of the my Foundation Bible School yeah. and various other things we're yeah. doing every night. Yeah. It's, it just hasn't been convenient. But normally he'll rub me three to five nights a week. And I taught him how to do the deep tissue massage because of my fibromyalgia. So normally he rubs me and I don't have to pay for a massage that often then. But I love the smelly lotions. So for Christmas, he will go and get me usually, um, what is that place? Bath oh, and Bed, Bottle? Bath and no, no, Bath and Body Works. Bath and Body yeah. Works has a sale. It's like buy one, get two free or something. I don't know what it is. But anyway, it's some sort of a sale. And so one of my Christmas presents every year is he restocks my smelly lotions because I love the really pretty lotions. Well, now that I'm making my own soap, I don't have to because I can just use the fragrance in unscented lotion and do it cheaper so I can make my own now. But what I do is if you look on the back there, in the back left, there's two brown bottles and then sort of in the middle, there's a white bottle with a pump. So those are both unscented lotions. And what I do with those is I take the scented lotion so that it goes further and I pour it into the unscented. So I'll pour like three or four tablespoons into the unscented lotion. And then I'll shake it up and then I get the scent, but I don't have to pay the price for using so much lotion. So, cause he'll probably use a good he likes the lotion better than oils, so um, I'll pro he'll probably use a good quarter to a half a cup maybe every time he's rubbing me because he'll rub me for he'll rub me for a good I don't know good two hours at least usually. Usually we're watching a movie. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll just lay on the couch or on the bed, and. Um, He'll rub me while we're watching a movie or a show or something. So two hours. Woo. I know. But it's that much, is it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah. Uh, Songbird asks, "Does massage help your fibro?" Yes. Yeah, it helps a lot. If I had the money, I would go in every other day and pay for it. And I wish I had the money because that is the only thing that has. Ha well, no. Let me re-say this. If I only had one thing I could spend money on, it would be the massage. And like, 
my wonderful husband again. He's so wonderful. What do we, I do now? That's I know. Awesome. Um, in last year, we had in the last year and a half, we've had six car accidents. Well, from one of those, and most of them were our fault. I think out of the six, one was our fault. Actually, it's seven now because I just smashed the back of the van. I forgot to count the back. When I, you drove through the garage? I drove through the garage with the hood <laughs> of the van open, and I smashed out the window. So now it's seven. With that the was hatchback part, yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> we won't go there. But we had six accidents in a year and a half. Only one of those was our fault. And... Um, we got some insurance money from that. So my, I was really going downhill fast. It'd been a really long year and a half, two years since we did. Um, our brother-in-law died. Our niece came to live with us. We got another child. We ended up in a really nasty court battle with his parents and sister. Um, and we were trying to keep the business floating. And I was sick. And we, at one point, we were driving kids seven and a half hours a day between my husband, my son, and I. We were driving kids seven and a half hours a day just to get them to school. We were tired. <laughs> I, was, I was physically just about ready to collapse. And so my wonderful husband let me take $1,500 oh, and, yeah. well, not let me take. I mean, he, that sounds like you own the money, but I mean, we agreed that... But we do um, tend to take, like to agree on these kinds of things. Yes, we do agree on these things. If he would have said, no, we need to do something else, we wouldn't have. What but did you do with it? I can't wait to find out. What did I do with it? I went for an entire month and sat in a motel in Glenwood Springs, Colorado by myself. And I sat in the motel, and then I went to the hot springs. And I sat in the motel, and I went to the hot springs. And I sat in the motel, and I went to the hot springs. And then you watch gardening shows online. And then I watched gardening shows and YouTube online. And then you went um, back to the Lost Springs. And then I went back to the Lost Springs. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I spent the money to do that. But honestly, in the end, I kind of wish I would have just taken the $1,500 and just gotten a massage two or three times a week until I was out of the money. Because I think, honestly, that probably would have helped me more. Um, but it was great. Don't get me wrong. But... Um, yeah, it probably helped me more. So, okay. Any other questions? Wow, well, Heather swears when he's <gasps> a saint. <laughs> okay, um, now just so everyone knows, he's not perfect. I'm not perfect. <laughs> we have our moments. <laughs> We're both very patient with each other. You're very patient. He's very patient with my CFS and fibromyalgia, and I'm very patient with his anxiety issues. So, yes, we <laughs> we both are very forgiving and patient. So, um, so there. So, Maria says, "Don't laugh, but some of the lotions can be used in soil for your plants." Because somebody uh, did you say something about donating so lotions? Because somebody no. asked where where no. to donate lotions. I think your mom's where to donate that. them. Oh, your mom said something about donating them to crisis shelters and stuff. Oh, yeah, you could. Have. Yeah. Um, okay, so back to the lotions. I wanted to show you something that I do. So here is me uh, filling up the lotion, how I was telling you how I sent it. So this one just had a tiny bit left. So when it just has a tiny bit left, what I do is I turn it upside down and I let it drain. And so here, what I do is I just lean it against the wall and I just let it drain for, I don't know, it takes an hour or two or something, and just let all the lotion go down. And then it all drips down and I don't have any waste and the bottle's totally empty. So that's how I empty those. Now, I did have a neighbor move and she gave me a ton of these little lotion packets. She, they go on vacation a lot and so she had collected, I am not kidding, she probably had 60, 70 of these little lotion packets. Well, that's a lot of lotion. I mean, I'm not going to waste all that, but at the same time, it's kind of a pain to open each one. So what I did was I just took the scissors, cut each one open, squirted it in there. And that seems crazy, but it only took me about two or three minutes to do it all. Mm -hmm. And so I emptied all those into the big lotion and got rid of all the little lotion samples. And this is a great project. If you have kids, have them sit with your lotion. 
samples and all that and just squirt them in there. I'll do that with my ketchup packets that we get at restaurants and stuff. Every now and then we'll get an overload, so I'll just sit at the kitchen table, cut the ends off, and put them into the big ketchup. So I'll do that. So you can see here, not a very good picture, but you can see how the lotions got all lined up. And here's a better picture. They're all lined up neat and fresh, and I got rid of all the extra lotions in there. And I didn't have to, um, I, I got them all in one bucket, I should say, and I even got two perfumes in there. That's my Gingy that I love that they don't sell anymore for Mary Kay. And, oh, I'm, I'm hoarding it. Poor Mike. I only wear it like once or twice a year now because they don't do it anymore. But did you say, you didn't say why you like Gingy or, that was our, so that was the perfume she wore at our wedding. Well, I, I just liked it because it was Gingy. Okay. <laughs> well, never mind then. <laughs> Sorry to burst your bubble. <laughs> I loved it because I wore it for a wedding. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's Sorry. why I like it. <laughs> <laughs> so he remembers our wedding when I wear it. I just like it. So. <laughs> mm. And it lasts forever. So perfume lasts forever. But here's the thing. If you have extra perfumes and stuff, use them. Put it on every day. I don't care if you're home with just the kids. Put it on. The kids love it when mom smells good. And so it is the hubbub. remember that years and years later. Yeah. yeah. And so I try. I don't make it every day. I do three to five days a week. But I try every day to put on perfume. Because it really does, you know, kids really remember that. And your husband really remembers that. And they do appreciate when you smell good. So well, use it. Tara mentioned something about me having anxiety. Well, sometimes that results in me being kind of cranky. And I'll be stuck in my work and trying to do something and kind of, I won't be angry to people, but I'll just be kind of in my own little world, kind of scowling a little. She'll put on perfume and, I don't know, it kind of soothes the savage beast a little bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, that's nice too. Yeah. So, I'll have to remember that next time. Do you want to answer? 30 okay. minutes. Are you got questions? Or? Okay, questions. Overall Whoa, questions hello. Just... All those are questions? Okay. Uh, well, let's see. Um, about cleaning, Kelly said, I never leave a room empty-handed. That's a good rule, but I keep forgetting to do that. But that's an excellent rule. If you want to stay picked up and organized, always, when you're going to the next room, look and see if there's something you can take there. I keep forgetting to do that. It drives me crazy because it, when you can do it, it really works. Yeah. And I'll grab two or three things every time I go from one room to another, and it's amazing. Yeah. It doesn't run out for a long time. Yeah. Uh, Cindy just said, great spot for scale. I'm not sure. Or she said Hannah, so it might not have been talking. To, uh, oh, maybe it was on the floor there. Oh, yeah, it was, yeah. On, the floor it was on the floor, yeah. Uh, Tina asked us, do you have a book about your experience with fibro? No. Uh, Don't want to relive it. Sorry. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, and your mom said a couple people thought this was helpful. She said, when organizing, don't leave the room you're working on. Place a box outside the door for things to put in other rooms. That, or that you need to get rid of. So, that, yes. Because you'll get distracted if you leave the room. So I do that when I'm organizing a closet. I will leave, I will have two or three boxes, I'll, or bags. So I'll have a big black trash bag for trash, and I'll have one or two boxes for donation, and one or two boxes for taking stuff to the other rooms, depending on which room I'm working in. So if it's the basement, I'll have like two of each, because I know it's bad. Or if it's like my... Like this room, I knew everything that was in this closet wasn't going to go to another room. So, uh, <laughs> okay, Big Bear Homestead, no wearing your wife's perfume. That's just weird. <laughs> Big Bear Don't. says my wife gets mad when I wear her perfume. <laughs> LOL. <laughs> yeah, I would too. Did I say that? What? Oh, I thought maybe I said that. No, nothing about okay. me wearing it. No. But with okay. the CFS, you never know. know. <laughs> Sometimes um, strange things come out. It some, might go yeah. viral someday. I know. That's why we always have to have livingonadime.com on there so we can get credit. So that unlike our how to fold a fitted sheet, which went viral, we had not on there and everyone stole our video. So anyway, I will leave a box in, or in the room or just outside the door if I am decluttering with stuff that has to go to another place. But because this bathroom closet was, I knew everything wasn't going to be, you know, in the same 
um, it was going back into the same closet or the trash. So I didn't, somehow we skipped getting a picture in here, but you can see what I'm done behind my hand there on the right. The entire sink is full of just trash. It is crazy how much stuff you have and that it's just trash. I mean, people don't realize trash is like probably 50% of the stuff that people get rid of. So in every room of the house. Every single room. And it's no I had it I had two grocery sacks full of trash by the time I was done with this. So, here's how it looked in the end. You can see on the top, I just left pretty much everything that was on the top. I took out three makeup bags that I got rid of, but um, I left the vaporizer because I needed it there and I needed the other travel bags. So pretty much I left that. Then on the bottom, you can see I got all the lotions in order. Then I got all the makeup in the middle in order. And for the next picture, I got on the right, all the face washes, the extra razors, and that kind of thing, because I found them later, so I threw them in there. Then in the middle is my hair supplies, and my deodorants, and that kind of thing. And on the right is the, oh, you can't see, I don't have an, an end picture on the right. So on the right is all of the um, toothbrushes, and wait a minute, I know I had a picture on that. Where'd it go? Um, 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 the which one? Uh, the finished of all the stacked. Oh, here it is. Um, then on the right, I had all the cotton swabs and the toothbrushes and everything. So I got all that organized. Then on the bottom, you can see the bottom's pretty much the same, except the towels are folded. Um, I did combine the medicines with the hair curlers because I don't use my hair curlers that often so I just put all those down there to give me just a little bit more room here you can see on the last picture next to my towels to put my hand towels so and I did have one bottle that I got for free of shampoo that was an extra so I put that in there so that is the end result of my organizing my bathroom <laughs> <laughs> that was tiring. It took me as long to talk about it as it did to actually do it. Yep. <laughs> so, anyway. Okay. Questions. Here we go. You ready? Actually, a lot of people talking about perfume. Um, well, Maria had a number of suggestions. She was talking about spraying it. Uh, I think she said something about spraying it in your clothes drawers. She says spray it on door hinges and light bulbs. Although I would guess oh, you would want to, yeah. I guess if they were incandescent, you'd want to not spray it when they're on because that might well, yeah. break. But yeah, uh, perfume on pillows and linens. I think that's an awesome idea. Oh dear. <laughs> I got another thing to do here. No, just kidding. Tina yes, says that's your... actually a good idea so that when you go to sleep, it smells really good. Yeah. Tina says use your perfume and your good china. Of course. Yes. Of course we don't yeah. have good china. No, this. we don't. <laughs> um, yeah, a lot of people are talking about perfume making memories and things. And it's funny because I think, you know, I still, I kind of have forgotten now, but for 20 or 25 years after my grandmother died, I would remember somebody would walk past me in the store and it would, it would suddenly have to look to see if that was her, which is really interesting. Yeah. Um, and then let's see, talking about donating things. Oh, let's see. Okay, hold on. I want to touch on this. Tina said, I think anxiety is rampant nowadays. Yes, it is, but these are some of the things that you can do to help curb that. When you go in and look into your bathroom closet or your bathroom drawer or whatever, and you can actually just open the door or open the medicine cabinet, whatever, find what you need and pull it out, that takes a huge amount of anxiety off of you. I get so stressed out, and it's like my biggest irritation in life. When I, when the kids do not put stuff back where it goes, and then I have to go digging for something. I hate digging for stuff. I really hate digging for stuff. I mean, I really hate digging for stuff. And if I didn't mention I hate digging for stuff, <laughs> because 
I don't have the energy to be going and digging through everything to find the scissors. We have eight pairs of scissors and no one puts them back. It drives me nuts. I even put a pair of scissors in every room in the house and they still disappear. So it really helps with anxiety and stuff like that if you can keep your house in order. That's definitely helpful. Uh, I do think that Tina was also referring to when uh, you were talking about me having anxiety. No, I know, but that's what I'm saying. Help, it helps with that. Well, it does. Actually, just seeing clutter around yes. creates anxiety. Now, but... for us, it's hard because we have five kids, so we're not going to be clutter-free. And I'm not going to sit and lecture my kids every second of every day. So, yeah. So we have to let it get to a certain threshold before, <laughs> before well, we go yeah. crazy, right? Um, and Tasha says, peace and calming, stress away, and real lavender oils are great to help with anxiety. Well, that's cool to know. Yes, it is. And Rhonda likes Moonlight Path also. Yes, that's my favorite scent. I love it. If anybody has extras you want to get rid of, feel free to send it to Tara Killam, PO Box 193, Mead, Colorado, 80542. I will take any of your extras. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay. Oh, and as far as organizing, Tina says sometimes perfectionism gets in my way. So it does for me too, and what I have learned, and this is going to sound crazy, but and Mike would disagree that I'm a perfectionist, but I am. <laughs> You're a perfectionist but about some things. I am actually a perfectionist. He just doesn't know it because I've worked on my perfectionism. Uh, very good. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Okay, you want to see Tara and Mike fight? No, I'm just kidding. Um, so you want to see that aspect of our lives. <laughs> yeah. um, so what I do is I always make sure to help to break myself of this because I knew that it was going to be a problem. And so when I was younger, my dad's side of the family are like major perfectionists. And I'm sorry if you guys are watching, but it's the truth and the truth hurts. And <laughs> Tammy's watching. <laughs> so I don't mean this is an insult, but it's true. And I mean, it's perfectionism to where you can't get anything else done because you're worrying about, you know, minutely cleaning around the edges of a container or something that's already clean or that. I mean, I can't think of a good example. It only happens when I'm around them and we're trying to get something done, but you know, you perfectionism is actually just as bad as anxiety and depression and all those other things in my book. Because what happens is, is it stops you from progressing. It stops you from getting things done. Getting yeah. things done, getting anywhere. So here's what I did to stop myself because I did not want to end up like that. I didn't want to be in a project that I never got done because I was trying to be so perfectionistic about it. So what I did was... I started on something little like the drawer that I was talking about at the beginning of the show and I'll leave one thing that's not perfect and that's how I started so now 20 years later Mike thinks that I'm not a perfectionist because I I got over it I really did so that's how I started was I left one thing that wasn't perfect so like if I'm cleaning the drawer, an example would be if I'm cleaning the drawer um, organizers that in that particular utility um, drawer, I'll leave one black scrape that I didn't get off as my perfectionistic I thing. Do that on purpose. I do that on purpose. And now you tell me you <laughs> told me, and I would have been more cool with it. <laughs> So I will leave one thing undone because if... 21 and a half years later, I find this out. <laughs> See? Secrets. No, but seriously, that's how I got over it because I saw in my family, this is rampant on, on, my, on my dad's side of the family. It's like every single member of the family has this problem. And it's, it's, it's bad. I mean, well, you know, so... Well, and perfectionism causes massive amount of anxiety for yeah. you if you're the perfectionist. Mm -hmm. And I know I've gone, gone through life and not accomplished a lot of things because of perfectionism. So yeah. for years I've called myself a recovering perfectionist. And I have one friend that had this awesome phrase he told me that I never forgot it after that. This was when we were working in television. And he would say, don't let the perfect get in the way of the possible. Yeah. And I realized, you know, if you get it done at all, 
it's better than trying to be perfect about it and never getting it done or completely driving yourself crazy with anxiety. And that's why on these videos you'll see the sound may not be good now sometimes, the picture may be a little blurry sometimes. I'm just like, put it on. Let's just keep going. We'll fix it the next time. Because we were getting so backlogged with videos. With Mr. Video Editor here. He's a professional to his credit, so it was really hard for him to leave this stuff because he had to go from professional TV broadcast to YouTube, which is not easy to do, and he's done very well, actually. But we finally just, in the last few months, have had to say, you know what, we're going to let it go and go on. So if you see the videos and something's not right, sorry, we're just going to keep going forward. <laughs> So anyway, yeah. A number of people said that was a great idea with the tiles. Some said it's a great a, a great idea for a way to use leftover tiles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Ramona, and those peel and stick, you can just cut them with the scissors. And Ramona says, uh, check Lowe's or Home Depot for clearance tiles. I didn't know yeah. about that. And actually, these ones... Sorry, guys. We're having wildfires, and my allergies are just killing me. Um, got to keep the house closed because of all the smoke. Yeah, we've had to keep the air conditioner on the house, the house closed. Um the those tiles that I got, they were actually on clearance at Dollar General. So even Dollar General, you'll find them on sale. Absolutely. And Karen says she has way too many towels. Well, get rid of them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how many people do you have in your house? Maybe do two towels for each person so that one's being washed and one's being used. And then take the rest and make them rags. I have a lot of towels, but we use a lot of rags. And so I have a stack. On Sunday, we're putting out how I organize my laundry room. And you'll see I have a, two bins of towels. But I keep those so that when the washer floods or the dishwasher floods, I can just grab them quick and mop everything up. Everything else, either cut up into rags that you can use as disposable rags or give them to the thrift store or somebody else who could use them. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Tasha said she lives in the middle of nowhere, so it isn't economical to go garage sailing. Of course, we used to live in this first. So yeah, that that's pretty in the middle of nowhere. Sorry, I don't. I don't use that as an excuse. We live seventy miles from town, and we still manage to go garage selling. So what you do is you plan your shopping around garage sale season. So for me, I would plan my shopping to go on Fridays and Saturdays when they had garage sales in Idaho, and you're not going to find as many. But when you find them, take advantage of them and don't just write them off as you just can't do it, period. We just now, have to look a lot to yeah. find good ones and figure out where to get stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, but if you live in the middle of nowhere and there just literally is not any garage sales within 300 miles, there are other ways to save money. It doesn't have to just be garage selling. You can, um, you can reuse things by... by um, food items like Velveeta that you would normally eat and use and use the boxes to organize your uh, silverware drawer. We, Mom and I do that all the time. We will buy a specific food item that we would use like, um, I'm trying to think of, oh, like there's a specific cracker that the kids love. So there's a name brand and there is the cheap brand. Well, the name brand was 25 cents more, but it came with a really cool box that I could use to organize. So I bought that one until I got as many as I needed and then I um, went back to the generic. So look for things like that, you know, reuse things, reuse your Amazon boxes. Amazon has some great size boxes. We use them all the time, especially the littler ones. So if you have Amazon, if you order from there or something, do that. Well, a lot of people are talking about being a proud for pre that perfectionism. Yeah, Songbird says, I'm a perfectionist also. Either keeps you from getting things done or exhausted from working on keeping things up. Of course, she said CFS and fibro helps you to learn more and let it go. It does. Having the CFS and fibromyalgia, I have really had to let a lot of things go because I just cannot expend my energy on things like that. I have to expend it on the important things, and I just can't waste time with that. You know, and Joanna Jean said, that's a great perfectionist tip. I used to be perfectionist OCD about cleanliness, but then I had children. Yeah. <laughs> so true. Yeah, cleaning with... If you're with, not, you're going to drive yourself completely nuts with kids. Yeah, cleaning with kids is like shoveling snow in a blizzard. 
You know, it's like, now Big Bear Homestead said that they could always use towels. So if you have extra towels, send them to Big Bear Homestead. Big Bear, put your, uh, put your address there in, in your about on your YouTube channel and have people send you towels. <laughs> You'll, oh. get, you'll get 500 towels. <laughs> and Jess says animal shelters are a great idea for towels. Oh, yeah. Animal shelters, women's shelters, children's homes, homeless shelters. Those are all great places to donate towels. And that's and one... And vet's offices. Yeah, and vet's offices. That's a good idea. One thing, stop holding on to your stuff. It is not worth the stress of digging through 30 towels when you use five. Bless someone else with your extras and use them instead to help someone else instead of creating more stress for you. Okay, so you made a mistake and you bought too many towels. Move on. Help someone else. Bless someone else. You know, my aunt, she um, bought new towels because she just wanted different colors, but it's only her, and her towels were in brand new condition. And all those towels that you saw in there, I got for free. So I just got rid of my old towels that I didn't like and took those, and I was happy. And you could make someone else happy by donating these things. So give it to a women's shelter. Maybe a single mom needs some new towels. So yeah, find out who needs something. Oh, there have been a couple questions. I sort of talked about this already, but a couple questions from people talking about kids. And I forgot who it was, but one of these was saying it was fine having her kids kind of help pick up when they were younger. And as they're getting a little older, it's more of a problem. I know we're, we've had that issue with the teenagers. That's especially. just a teen thing. <clears throat> it is. I mean, we have to nag ours every day. Get in here. Pick up your stuff. You know, um... The main thing is to just keep on top of them. My mother swears when they leave home, they will do it themselves. I'm having faith and hope in that. <laughs> but, you know, you just have to keep going and keep on them and make them responsible for their stuff, and eventually they'll move out. And if they don't move out, unless they're disabled or something, you need to get them moved out. <laughs> Yeah, Holly says it's hard to get two teenage boys as a single parent to get anything done. Not having a second person back up in the house to help. Okay, Holly, that is true. But one thing we have found, and this might help you, is we say before you go to work, you have to have all these chores done. Before you go out with your friends, you have to have such and so chores done. And oh, oops, the keys were in my pocket. I, I guess when the chores are done, I'll remember where they are. Yeah, and I mean, that may be hard if you're single, but, you know, what you need to do then is just say, okay, I came home and your chores weren't done, give me your phone. Or, nope, sorry, you're not using my car to go visit your friends because you didn't get your, your chores done, so. Well, and I think for teenage boys, it really helps to, always, to have as much as you can written. And because boys listen to mom for... 10 seconds, and then after Ten that, everything seconds. else is blah, blah, blah. Yeah, totally. You're being optimistic. Okay, three seconds. <laughs> then everything else is blah, blah, blah. And for, I'd say the boys and the girls when they're teenagers, I find it it's a little easier to say, we need this done by 3 o'clock, mm -hmm. and it's noon today. And there's kind of an understanding that if you don't do it by 3 o'clock, then I'm going to come in and I'm going to take you in there and watch you do it. Yeah. Which is kind of silly for a teenager, but they recognize, you know, they'd rather do it on their schedule. And if I give them three hours and say sometime in that three hours, they're more likely to do it. Yeah. Because they can sort of choose that. So. All right. Let's see. Yeah. Mom used to have us do before breakfast, before we could eat, we had to have all our chores done. So that's good. My problem with that is because I'm sick, I get up like 10 minutes before they have to be driven to school. So, and that's my fault. We need to go to bed earlier, but it's so hard. We want, you know, 30 minutes to kind of wind down before we go to bed. So it's kind of hard to not stay up late, just to have a moment to ourselves. But yeah. Dirt Patch Heaven says your background is beautiful. My background is, oh, thank you. <laughs> like the new towels? Awesome. I guess I'm going to have to switch out my towels every oh, week. Oh, somebody asked about that. Like, where's my finger? This sign. This sign. Oh, yeah, this sign right there. Okay, so can you reach it and we'll show it? Okay. Sure. And so, while, we're, while I'm getting it, uh, 
Big, oh, yeah, ba Big okay. Bear said if you're going to remodel your bathroom, what would you add to help you get and stay organized? So I would add as much storage space as possible. The problem with bathrooms power. is, yeah. It's all about the power. <laughs> but make sure, as a matter of fact, we'll do, we have a video somewhere that we don't have processed yet, but we even took out our mirror of our bathroom and put in a huge medicine cabinet, a three-sectioned medicine cabinet I found at the thrift store for 20 bucks because... Um, that really helped a lot. The thing, why stuff ends up on the counter, and especially the medicine cabinet, if you have room to put a big medicine cabinet or even any kind of medicine cabinet in front of your um, sink, you can put your toothbrush and your toothpaste and all that kind of stuff in there, and then you don't have to see it every day, but it's convenient. The problem for people with organization is they don't make it convenient. You have to make it convenient for it everything so for us i just open up the cabinet there's my toothbrush i don't have to dig through anything i don't have to find anything i just open up the drawer there's my hair ties right there i don't have to dig through anything you want to make it so that you don't have to dig through anything that's why these um these containers here i really love because um you can see here i don't have to dig i can just see what I have, pull that container out slightly if there's something in the back, and get it out. So I would put, if you're remodeling and you have a choice, I would put as much storage as you can. A storage above the sink, storage under the sink. I even put storage above our toilet, which we'll show in one of these videos. We're working on a house tour. So we have storage above our toilet. And then um, in this bathroom, we actually have a physical closet which is great I love it the only problem is the builders don't think these things through and I know they were thinking of putting like toilet paper and stuff in that closet but I had to make our own toilet paper storage because if you're sitting on the pot and you run out of toilet paper you have to stand up and reach around the corner just keeping it real y'all yeah. <laughs> I hate that thing I don't want it real I have enough of real <laughs> no, just kidding. Um, and so I made my own toilet paper storage above the toilet so that we can use that a little more conveniently. So I'm going to show that. But um, yeah, add more storage. So back to my little sign here. So can you guys see my sign? So when I was in Holland, when I was, I went to be an exchange student after I was in high school to Sweden and I visited my friend in Holland. It says, daily prayer, oh Lord, help me to keep my big mouth shut until I know what I'm talking about. I thought that was pretty hilarious when we were dating and had no idea what it meant, but I thought it was pretty funny. Now you know, huh? I am known I'm for... I'm keeping my mouth shut. <laughs> I'm known for just blurting stuff out and not being delicate like the other... There's no diplomacy in this woman. I have no diplomacy <laughs> I'm the diplomat. Yeah. We're, yeah. We're, we're a very good good cop, bad cop. Yeah. With her being the bad cop. <laughs> yeah, I have no diplomacy at all. I'm like, just suck it up and get, <laughs> get over it. <laughs> but then at the same time, I also say things I don't mean to. Like my friend the other day, she had she has to be on a very specific diet. And she had applesauce and rice together. And I looked and I'm like, oh, that's gross. And I'm like, she's like, well, that's my breakfast. I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. I felt so bad. Oh, I felt so bad. So occasionally I'll just stick my foot in it. But uh, A couple of things. Big Bear said they're remodeling their uh, bathroom from scratch, and that's why he was asking. He asked if we have a picture of the cabinet, and you, we'll probably show that in another video. Yeah, said. I'll have Mike see if he can get that done for you. <laughs> I should um, run in there with my phone and take a picture. Next week. Well, if you want to run in there real quick and take a picture. Um, and take a picture of it open real quick. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Mike's going to go do go see if he can... Take a picture of it real quick and get it loaded on here. I don't know if we can get it done in time. No, I just have to hold it in front of the camera. Oh, okay. Um, and uh, let's see. So, yes, Mike's going to get the thing. Um, Songbird. Songbird wants to know if Big Bear has an older brother. Songbird, we are not a dating site. <laughs> well, unless we're finding mom a husband, I guess. He has to be rich and good looking and live in Colorado for mom. Um, Sue says, yeah, Tara, my mouth goes into overdrive. Yeah, I really, 
I say things and I truly, half the time they come out and they don't mean at all how they sounded, but it's just because I'm tired and my tone of voice is sounding sarcastic or whatever. But yeah, Cheeky Sever says she's not a, a diplomat either. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. <laughs> um, let's see. Anything else we have? Let me check Facebook. Hold on, Mike. Mike's left me. Baskets. Yeah, I don't like baskets very well because you you can't see inside what's in them. So for organizing, I don't like baskets. Maria says you look tired. Yes, I am very tired, but I'm. thank you for understanding. And Shayla Cooper says, I know all about... Hi, Auntie S. I know how well... Wait a minute. <laughs> laugh? Okay. I know all too well how a big mouth my sister-in-law has. Yes. My poor sister-in-law. See, we're a very forgiving family. That's the only way we've stayed married and not killed each other. Um... Um, okay, uh -oh. so we're, we're starting to... all right. So Mike's going to show a picture of our bathroom um, cabinet real quick here. So um, come on, phone. There we go. I don't know if you can see. Well, oh, it's dark. It's dark. Uh, oh, and it's kind of reflected. Okay, so oh, hold, hold still. Don't move. Don't move. Don't move. So right here along this, oops, along this side is the edge, and it goes clear over here. And it goes up here and up here. And it's reflecting, but see, it's in one, two, three segments. Three segments. Did you open them up and take a picture? I, oh, well, okay. I, I did open. So anyway, those three doors open. And I found that one well, I did at... vertical pictures. Though, okay. Oh, okay, yeah. So, oops, where is that? So here you can see on the inside... We, we can actually get a better picture. Yeah, we'll get a better one, but just so you see. So see all these shelves we have in here? So this is where I have my makeup and my hair stuff and all my supplements and everything. So this is the middle section. And then there's two other sections that are in there. And I got this one at Habitat. I think it was 20 bucks, And I painted the edge with paint to match my bathroom. So... Yeah. Um, okay. Are we, anybody else have any questions? Let me know. Um, hmm. Sandy says, I made a cleaning game with my kids, put slips of paper with chores, whoops, where'd she go, and some rewards. If they wanted something, they went to the bowl to pick out a paper, had to do what was on the slip completely before they could pick another slip and loved the, they loved the bowl. Yeah, that's, that's a, a great idea. idea. Yeah, that's a good idea. Then you could just keep the slips and just put the done ones in another bowl and then you'll know when you've rotated through everything. So that's a good idea. Stephanie says her kids always pitch in better when she's sick. Then no, I don't play sick, but I have thought about it a few times. That's funny. So, yeah. All right. Well, I think that's it for this show. Um, were we going to mention, so we were thinking about changing the time next week. Okay, so a couple of things. We're changing our time to 4.30 next week p.m. Mountain Time. I'm really sorry. I know we may miss some of you guys. You can watch the replay. But the problem is this is cutting up our day doing it at noon. And it's really, we're not able to get anything else done. And so it's really cutting into our day to do this at noon. Because it takes us about three hours to set up, do the show, and then take down and answer questions and everything. So, so we're hoping that still works for a lot of people. Yeah, so we hope it works. If not, I'm really sorry, but we've got to give this a try. Um, and it is kind of an experiment at the moment. We're going to yeah. do that for a little bit and see how it goes. And if it's just a total bomb, then we won't do it, but we'll try it and see. The next thing is, so next week at 4.30 Mountain. Next week, 4.30 Mountain. The other thing is the Homestead Network starts tonight with Big Bear at 8 Eastern. Big Bear, if you're still on there, can you confirm it's Eastern? Um, but go to Big Bear Homestead, and he's going to be live doing his show. And um, check us out on the Homestead Network dot com is where all the listings for all the homesteading shows are at 6 p.m. mountain so we're 8 p.m. eastern tomorrow night on saturday so check us out there we're all trying to collaborate together so that we can get the homesteading saving money people together because there's a bunch of great content and we're trying to support each other to get more content out also um don't Wait. forget Big Bear says, so that's 6 p.m. Eastern 
No. And then he says yes. Oh, what? So the show that you do tomorrow, Big Bear, is at 6 p.m. Eastern or 8 p.m. Eastern? Yeah, Big Bear, tell us what time and what what um, zone. So also don't forget our books are on sale, 50% off. Dining, dining is not, but everything else, oops, did I get two? No, everything else, penny pension, dig out of debt, these are 50% off right now. Go to livingonadime.com, click on the store, or if you're on your phone, click on click our, get our books here. 50% off this week, so if you want them, Christmas in July, we wish you a Merry Christmas. Is that perky enough? <laughs> sure. Uh, so grab our books for 50% off this week. Um... Let's see, Big Bear didn't confirm, so I'm assuming 8 p.m. Eastern for Big Bear tonight, and then we're on 6 p.m. Mountain, which is 8 p.m. Eastern tomorrow night. So, have a good night, guys, and we will see you tomorrow at 6 p.m., and have a great weekend. Oh, wait, uh, so Big Bear says, no, I'm 8 p.m. tonight, Eastern time. Big Bear is 8 p.m. tonight. Eastern Time. Big Bear Homestead. Go to YouTube. Click on his thing. He's trying to get 50 viewers tonight. Maybe we'll put all our kids on there on different ISPs <laughs> for you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We'll see you guys then. All right. Cool. Oh, I guess we need to turn it off. We're done, right? <laughs> Have a great rest of the day, guys. Thank you.